Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ presented by Geico. The draft, it's right around the corner and our guy Ryan Wilson, he's uh, pretty busy this time of the year releasing his latest mocks, dealing with Rick Spielman, the list goes on. And now we're looking at his top wide receiver prospect rankings. These are one through five for Ryan. Number one out of Ohio State, he has Jackson Smith and Digba. Number two from TCU, Quentin Johnson. Number three from Boston College, Zay Flowers. Out of USC, coming in at number four, Jordan Addison. And then rounding out the top five is Tennessee's Lynn Hyatt. Ryan Wilson is back with us here on HQ for a draft film room breakdown. Ryan, I've done these with Rick, Pete, Liget, so I'm excited to do it with our senior draft analyst. And we're going to talk about your top wideouts on your list, starting with number one, Jackson Smith and Jigma. You saw them firsthand at Ohio State's Pro Day. I know you were there to see C.J. Stroud, but I'm sure he caught your eye as well. Between that and the film, what makes him number one on your list, Ryan? By the way, Jacqueline, so mock drafts, Rick Spielman, you mentioned the new, you didn't mention the new puppy. That's oh, another forgot. reason I've been extremely busy. <laughs> that said, Jackson Smith and Jigba is special because he only played three games last year, only had five re receptions, but you go back to the 2021 tape, and that's what gets your attention. He ran a 4-5 at his pro day. That is plenty fast enough, but the thing that really sticks out is the short area quickness. You can see it here. The defensive back number two has his eyes in the backfield. That means Jackson's leaving. Great catch, ability to catch the ball away from his body, and then uses shows his strength, uses the stiff arm to fight off the defensive back who just got burned, make his way into the end zone, showing great contact balance. Six feet, 200 pounds, and you see that strength, and you see that short area quickness where he wins quickly and then outruns the defender. Four or five, as Rick Spielman said at the pro day, is fast enough, and it certainly shows up right there for Jackson Smith and Jigba. Here he is again out of the slot, which is where he will primarily play. He's going to beat this second level defender who looks to be playing zone. CJ layers the ball in perfectly. And then again, short area quickness. The safety overplays it towards the end zone. Jackson Smith and Jigba cuts inside and then outruns everyone to the end zone. Gets a great block from his teammate as well. But this is all over the tape in 2021. And it's why Garrett Wilson and CJ Stroud both told us separately that Jackson Smith and Jigba was the best wide receiver on this team. That included Garrett Wilson and of course Chris Olave and Marvin Harrison the second. So again, out of the slot. We just saw him running over. This time he's going to go outside towards the corner and he sells that to the slot defender. Slot defender has no chance. He allows enough space for CJ to layer the ball in there between the sideline and where Jackson Smith and Jigba is. And again, he makes this catch look easy. He tracks the ball well, uses hands well, a Willie Mays center field uh, catch there and gets his feet in bounds for a touchdown. And this is what an NFL team will be getting to the next level as he hits the gritty there like he's Justin Jefferson. I was going to say, I think his gritty skills, I mean, those are obviously uh, ready for the league as well. Okay, let's move to number two on your list. You have Quentin Johnson. A lot of people, this is their number one wideout. I know Rick Spielman mentioned on your podcast, this guy maybe has the highest ceiling of all the wide receivers in this draft class. When you're looking at tape from TCU, Ryan, um, when do you think, or I guess how soon do you think he can be a difference maker at the next level? Yeah, that's the question because the reviews are mixed on Quentin Johnson, and clearly I like him. He's my number two. He's the biggest wide receiver of this group that we're going to talk about, and Rick Spielman talks about it all the time on the podcast. He's able to win at all three levels, even though he plays uh, as a much bigger wide receiver. Here he is on the outside against Kansas late in the game. This game is already pretty much decided, and it's going to be even more decided. Max Duggan throws up a jump ball to his best player, and what does Quentin Johnson do? He does that, and that's all over the tape. Hands catch back in the end zone, gets his foot down. Uh, he was held on the play, did didn't matter. He makes that play all the time. He does have the occasional focus drops, but that he can do this means he can do it consistently once he gets rid of those focus drops. And, and that's a play he's going to have to make consistently in the NFL as a high point catch target, again, with the big catch radius. Here he is playing in the slide. And the great thing about this is they're pinned deep in their own end. He's going to run a little, a little in here. And he's going to take uh, what should be a five or six yard gain. He's going to put his foot in the ground here, twist up this defender, outrun him, then turns into running back mode. And he's just dragging guys down the field, avoids the peanut punch there, doesn't fumble, has two other defenders trying to tackle him. They can't make a play. So he takes what should be a five or six yard gain, turns it into a 50 yard gain, gets him near midfield. And finally, here he is again, making a catch, turning out uh, of the defender. Utah's moves in the open field and, and turning into a running back. And, and again, you see this all the time. And I don't know why we're not talking more about his yards after catch ability because he can do this and he is a huge help for a young quarterback at the next level where you can throw the ball short, intermediate, or deep. And he's just going to make plays 
play after play after play. And finally, here he is. He's going to run a little, a little in, a little slant, quick slant here. Hits him in stride. Again, this is a play that he likes, clearly. He puts his foot in the ground, twists outside, turns into Derrick Henry with the arm over there, and just starts running down the field for the yak uh, before he gets pushed out of bounds on the other team's half of the field. What's not to let love, and unlike a lot of the wide receivers on this list outside of Jackson Smith and Jigba, Quentin Johnson's huge, huge target, 6'3", ran in the 4'5", which is plenty fast enough, and then we see the yards after the catch all over his film, and that makes him so intriguing as a possible uh, top half of the first round and certainly first-round consideration. All right, let's get to number three on your list. You have Zay Flowers out of Boston College. There is, I mean, certainly a lot to like there. A lot of people mention his size when they talk about concerns that they have, but what do you like about Zay, Ryan? I have no concerns about his size, even though he's 5'9", and there's going to be serious consideration. I know that several teams in the league have him as their wide receiver one. 5'9", 183-ish is what he was at the combine, ran to the 4'4". So he actually plays faster than 4'4". Here he is on the outside. Excuse me, he's in the slot at the top there, the number two. He's going to run it over against his own look, and the quarterback does a good job of avoiding pressure and being able to step up in the pocket and then hitting Zay in stride, and Zay does the rest. Hands catch here, cuts it back. And then he does, and it's, it's crazy. The, the more I watched of Zay Jones, the more I got the feel of Antonio Brown in his prime. The ability to win in short areas, the ability to snatch the ball out of the air and change directions once he gets that ball and then know where the players are around him that he has to avoid and use his athleticism to avoid them as he turns on the afterburners for the yards after the catch. Uh, he does this all the time. So he plays inside. He can play outside here. And this is him making plays down the field. He is 5'9", but he plays sometimes like Quentin Johnson, who is 6'3". Just throw the ball up and let your best player make plays. He tracks the ball extremely well. The defender has no idea where the ball is, and now he knows what he needs to do to set up this defender and find his way into the end zone. Again, looking like A.B. in his prime. And I give him credit here when you see the replay from the end zone. He knows where the ball is and where the safety is. He catches it, sidesteps him, and then sets up this block that allows him to get into the end zone. And... 5'9", on paper, he plays like he's 6'1 or 6'2". He has returnability as well. Again, just running a little shallow here. This is a simple concept. Uh, they've run this around thousands of times. The difference is the zone defender falls down. It wouldn't really have mattered. And oh, by the way, three guys here locked in on making a tackle. He uses his strength and athleticism to beat them and then drags a fourth defender into the end zone. You don't see that very often. A lot of times you make this catch and you go down to the, the three or four yard line and then your offense has to continue to make plays. He solves that problem. He gets into the end zone first try, shows the ability to break arm tackles and to split three defenders, which you don't see a lot of in college, let alone at the next level. I love Zay Flowers, and don't be surprised, Jacqueline, if he ends up being wide receiver one. Yeah, and Ryan, in your latest mock, you have him going in the first round, the 21st pick to the Chargers. All right, number four on your list of top wideouts in this year's draft class, you have Jordan Addison, rather, USC by way of Pitt. I know in a lot of the conversations, his uh, 449 40 at the Combine comes up. Regardless, he had a great year. What team do you think is going to be a good fit for him? Yeah, he could go. Like, the Chargers make a ton of sense there. The Ravens make a ton of sense. There are plenty of teams that could use him. Uh, the uh, Patriots there in the middle of the first round at 14, I think he's a first-round talent. And you mentioned the 4-4-9, and typically I describe that as being, quote-unquote, disappointing. I don't know how you could be disappointed in a 4-4-9. He plays somehow faster than that. Here he is uh, against Utah. He's going to get on this defender's toes in a hurry, and then he's going to run a, a corner out there, or a post route, excuse me. Great hands catch. Great yak ability. Here he is on the outside. He can play outside or in. It'll see, we'll see what NFL teams think he should play. This is against Stanford. Stanford's defense has a lot of bad tape. Not Jordan Addison's fault. He's just going up against whoever's guarding him, and this guy doesn't have a chance. He outruns him. Uh, on the, he wins early on the route, and then the, the contact balance there to break through the arm tackle, find his way into the end zone. He doesn't look like he's 173 pounds. He looks like he's about uh, 200 pounds. Tracks the ball extremely well. The defensive back doesn't have a chance, and then the rest is – a wrap, as they say. He Again, he's did, he did this for USC last season. Two years ago, he did it time and time again for Pitt with Kenny Pickett as his quarterback, and I think there's a great chance that that transitions what we saw there on tape to the next level early in his NFL career. All right, and finally, number five on your list, we got to talk about Jalen Hyatt out of Tennessee, and I know you were able to talk with him at the Combine. He had a great season in 2022 with 67 receptions. Ryan, where are you at on Jalen Hyatt, and what is your comp for him? 
Mike Wallace out of Ole Miss back in the day, drafted by the Steelers, is my comp because Mike Tomlin would joke that Mike Wallace was a one-trick pony and that he ran only vertical routes. He certainly did more than that, and so did Jalen Hyatt, and we'll see that here in a second. But he is an absolute burner, 4-4 speed. Again, he plays fast on that, and credit to him for taking advantage of an opportunity to start when Cedric Tillman got hurt. Here he is just running a simple slant route. The safety in the middle of the field slips. You can't see him. You'll see him in a second. Then he splits these two defenders, including the slot defender, 26, who never had a chance. There's number eight, who slipped early in the route, allowing him to take a a short gain to the house uh, for a touchdown. And that was a recurring theme. Again, you see it here. 26 takes a bad angle. Thought he had help in the middle of the field. He doesn't. And Jalen Hyatt makes them pay. And he made a lot of teams pay this year, simply taking what looked like easy passes to the house. Here he is. Uh, they have a stack here, so he gets off the line of scrimmage without getting touched. This is against Alabama, and that's Brian Branch in coverage. And Brian Branch is going to be a first-round pick. But here's the difference, Shacklin, between 4-5-8 speed, which is Brian Branch, and 4-4 speed, which is Jalen Hyde. And this was one of five, count on five touchdowns against Alabama. You see it again, the switch release. Gets inside on Brian Branch. Thinks he has help inside, but he beats the safety. Jordan Battle as well. Jordan Battle takes out his teammate by accident. And again, he's just walked into the end zone. There's a lot of tape of Jalen Hyatt winning early and walks into the end zone. And here he is one more time. If you're an Alabama fan, look away because this happened a ton in that matchup against the Volunteers. And that's why he has a chance to be truly special. Here he's in the slot. And Jalen Hyatt does play a lot in the slot. This is basically 1v1 with the slot defender. And again, he gets stacked early and that's it. That's a wrap. There's no catch him. The safety gets over late. Great pass by Hinton Hooker. We haven't said that enough uh, in these conversations here with Jalen Hyatt. And he, it's all, basically a long handoff is how good Jalen uh, Hyatt and Hinton Hooker are with their relationship. Neither defensive back has a chance there for another tough touchdown. But Jalen Hyatt has a history of making it look so incredibly easy. And that's why he went from no one was talking about him in September, Jacqueline, to a real chance of him being uh, a top 40 selection next week. And really quickly, Ryan, I know Rick has said, hey, no one's heard about him, but that also kind of brought up a concern for him. Like, you know, hey, why all of a sudden are we seeing this uh, from Hyatt? Is that a concern for you, or are you not worried about that? Right, so Rick is glass half empty, I'm glass half full. <laughs> so for me, Jalen Hyatt took advantage of an opportunity when one of his teammates got hurt and allowed him to step up, and he seized the moment. Sometimes players get these opportunities and they're not able to capitalize. Uh, why didn't he do it sooner? He's in college, and sometimes you – progress later than, than your teammates do. You grow into your body and mature later than your teammates do. I give them all the credit in the world, and I think this is the beginning of something uh, that's going to continue to trend upwards. It's not a concern for me in terms of why didn't he produce earlier in his career uh, because he's 19, 20 years old, and I think his best football is going to be in front of him. All right, that is Ryan Wilson joining us here on HQ for a film breakdown for his top wideouts in this year's draft class. Thank you so much, Ryan. Also, the uh, new dad of a puppy. We forgot to mention that off the top. All right, we have more NFL draft film breakdowns coming your way as we inch closer and closer to the draft. On Friday, we're talking about the D-line with Lee J. April 24th, we're talking about the backs. And then on April 25th, just a few days before the draft, we're going to do a film breakdown for the quarterbacks in this year's draft class. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.